Karen Dillenston, thank you so much for being here and all the way, coming all the way from East Africa. I don't get to say that very often. Let's dive in and unpack that first of all. So what makes a midlife woman run away to East Africa or run to it? I'm not sure what you're doing. You run to Africa, you run to Europe, you run to Asia, you run to where your heart is calling you. Because every midlife woman watching knows that she has dreams that she pushed off to the side while she took care of everybody and everything else in her life. But those dreams still live. And when you get the chance, you unpack them and you run to them. And so traveling the world has been on my list and I'm doing it. And I hope that I'm shining a light and giving permission slip to every other woman who has a dream to say, yes, do it. Now is the time you can and you deserve it. I so love it. You're inspiring me. I mean, first of all, I think that is what you and I both hope that we do is like change mm -hmm. the expectation for women in the way that they age. And, and for me, it's so that they decide, well, I'm going to change the way I exercise so I can change the way I use this vessel. That's going to be my vehicle for doing that. But yeah. I mean, you've leveled up, you, you've raised the bar for, I was like, wait a minute. Why am I not doing that? Like, why am I not doing that? And then I see this picture of you, which everybody needs to come and watch. Like, okay, not enough that you're in East Africa, but you're also in a hot air balloon. Hello. I mean, <laughs> it never ends. Listen, if you're going to do it, you got to do it. Now, some of you watching, you want to go in a hot air balloon and you've never done it. What are you waiting for? And maybe it's because your hormones aren't balanced. You know, I always say nothing can stop a woman with balanced hormones or nothing can stop a woman in hormonal prosperity. Everything or anything can stop a woman without balanced hormones or in hormonal poverty. So do the things, right? So I'm doing all the things, went on safari last weekend and I saw lions in person in their own habitat. I saw some of them on their honeymoon. I saw mama lion with baby oh, cubs less than eight weeks old. I saw the most beautiful leopard, exquisite, sleeping in a tree. I mean, so you gotta do the thing, but you also have to have great exercise and hormonal prosperity to be able to do the thing. So I your dreams that. are waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Can can we back up? So I think yeah. there are a lot of women who are like, um, that's a blanket statement for them maybe, saying hormonally balanced, because a lot of women are hearing this. I'll hear them say, well, that I don't have hormone imbalance. I'm just in menopause. Your answer to that. <laughs> so menopause is hormonal poverty. That's what it is. And so um, if you're live, you know, financial poverty is when you don't have the financial resources to meet your living needs. Hormonal poverty is when you don't have the hormonal resources to meet your body's needs. Your body needs these hormones to function optimally. You have receptors in every cell, every system for these hormones. Your brain needs these hormones. I call them flex hormones, not sex hormones for two reasons. First, they have flexible functions in the body. And second, deploying them is like deploying one of the most powerful muscles in your body, which you work with Deborah, so you know how important that is. Um, your brain needs them, right? When you don't have enough, you can get dementia and Alzheimer's. Your heart has receptors for these. When you don't have enough, you get heart disease and heart attack. Your immune system has receptors for these. When you don't have enough, this is why COVID infection is more severe in women not using hormone therapy than women using it. And the death rate is higher too. You have flex hormone receptors in your bones and bone thinning and osteoporosis can occur. So we're so used to thinking about, oh, I'm just in menopause, like it's not a big deal. I just can't have babies anymore. And what I wanna do is throw some cold water in your face 
and say, wake up, because what you don't realize is that your lifespan is going to be shorter because you're in hormonal poverty and menopause. Nobody's telling you that. I know uh, you're at higher risk for seven of the top 10 causes of death and disability. Nobody's telling you that. I know. And you're at risk for what I call midlife metabolic mayhem, which is the 60 plus symptoms that women over 40 experience from weight gain to fatigue and insomnia, hair loss, low libido, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, right? You know the list because you've got it. You're at risk for all that. So it's not, I'm just in menopause. Mm -hmm. I don't have unbalanced hormones. No, you have something way more severe, my love. You are in hormonal poverty. So clear. All right. I'm going to keep going on this because literally, so let me, let me be clear to anybody listening. So if you're not on the insider scoop with the flipping 50 membership, you don't know this and you don't know that Dr. Kieran is my insider. We have a mini course inside and we have 10 of them, but she is the one who's actually going over labs. She is describing what's the difference between bio identical hormone replacement and just hormone replacement, why certain lab tests aren't done, how they may be interpreted wrong. We have a mini course inside, but we want to bring some of that knowledge outside. So if you're not there, we want to spread it. And we'll get to that in a second, because Dr. Kieran is actually hosting a Stop the Menopause Madness Summit. And I'd love to have you all come because you can get that insider information there. And not only that, she's curated from other experts who from working with women so long she's pulling different divisions exercise is one but it's not the only one we have to work on it from all sides i've got a woman who said here's my dilemma like i am six months post menopause do i need hrt should i consider hrt i feel great i'm I'm not complaining about anything. And I think you alluded to this, but you know, what we can't see any of us is down the road. Would you talk to that? Sure, absolutely. So this concept of that, I only need hormones if I don't, if I feel poorly yeah. is such a big lie that we need to bust, a myth that we need to bust, whatever what you want to call it. It's a fallacy. You don't use hormones so you can feel better. That is a byproduct. Just like if you don't have enough potassium in your blood, you're, you're at risk for uh, heart uh, fibrillation and anomalies, right? Your heart acting up. Yeah. You don't only take it if you feel like your heart's acting up. You check your potassium level and if it's low, you replace it because you know that the heart needs adequate potassium to function optimally. It's the same with your hormones because every cell, every system, depends on these powerful flex hormones, like I call them, to be optimally, uh, function optimally, you use them to make sure that your brain functions optimally, to make sure that your heart functions optimally, your lungs, your skin, every part of your body, your immune system, um, your bones, every cell needs them. And then as a byproduct, you feel good. So you know, how long does it take you to feel crappy after you get a hole in your tire when you're driving down the highway? <laughs> Are you going to be like, well, I saw that big old nail go in my tire, but I've gone 10 miles and we're still going pretty good. So I'm not going to worry about it. No, <laughs> you pull over and you find a service station and you say, there's a big old nail in my tire. Can you please take it out and fix the hole so that you know you can continue to your destination and get there and not end up on the side of a road with a flat? Well, it's the same with hormonal poverty of menopause. You get your hormones tested to know where you are on what I call the menopause spectrum. Where are your hormone levels? Where's your progesterone? Where's your three types of estrogen? Where's your testosterone, right? All the hormones you need. And then you tune them up to where they should be for optimal health so that your all your cells, your brain, everything can get what it needs to function so you can get to 
whatever, 60, 70, 80, 100, 120, however long you wanna live and be optimally healthy, right? Studies show that uh, natural hormone therapy prolongs life. And if you are in hormonal poverty in menopause, you have a decreased lifespan. Mm -hmm. I know nobody's telling you that. So I might be the first, I'm sure Deborah has told you, let me hammer it into your consciousness because you know, no decision is a decision. Yeah. And what's happening is most women are like, I feel okay. Do I really need it? My doctor didn't say I need it. Right. And I'm saying this out of love because I used to be one of those doctors. Um, they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that their ignorance on this topic is causing you, going to cause you harm down the line. So I say, get the education, knowledge you need. If you're hanging with Deborah, you're getting that. And at the Stop the Menopause Madness Summit, we've got almost a hundred experts, most of whom are doctors, teaching you what you need to know to make this the best time of your life, get out of hormonal poverty. So don't go by, I feel okay, right? You could say, oh, I feel okay. And there's a nail in my tire. Mm -hmm. How long is that going to last? Oh, I feel okay. And my potassium is 2.3. How long is that going to last? It's not about how you feel. That is important. But when you fix the function, mm -hmm. how you feel falls in line to feel incredible. Love that. I love that. And I would, for those of you who are thinking, but I feel fine. And the other one is I look fine. I think, right? Because right. vanity has long been the reason we all turn to exercise. Like we don't necessarily turn to it till we feel like I want to change something about my body. Similarly, changing our diet, whatever it might be, it's how we look and how we feel has been like the first. And no fault, no judgment here. I mean, I don't care what gets somebody off the couch because if it's <laughs> because of how you look, we give you a two for one. I mean, you're going to be healthier because you're drawn to it. I mean, and nobody ever got complimented for not looking good, right? I mean, you get complimented because of the things. So of course we want more of that. But I want to come back to, I have women who will say, you know, I'm 10 years post-menopause. Now I'm wishing I would have done HRT. I'm 14 years past. Is it too late for me? So I first want to point out the fact that for those of you who are thinking, well, I don't really need it right now. So I'm going to get by with it. I've been there too. I've been there, but then it sneaks up on you and, you know, you're riding on that tire and it's not good for the rest of the car. I'm just saying, right. And then you're trying to play catch up. It's like, yes, at any time, could you start, but wouldn't it have been better if you started then? So maybe address the 10 year post menopause, 14 year post menopause, it's too late right. for, or can they start? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we really talk about in medicine, menopause as if it's an event and it happens and then it's over. Yeah. And that's so misleading. It really is a spectrum that happens starting at 35, your hormones are going and they just keep going down and down and down. And then you stop having periods and they keep going down and they're still going down even more and more and more. So this idea of, I feel okay. Yeah, well, eventually when you have that nail in your tire, how long is that gonna last? And then when women start feeling poorly, they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize what I was signing up for. Can mm -hmm. I get help? Well, there is some data in the literature that says that if you don't start within five years, um, there may not be benefit for certain systems and you may potentially cause harm. But having said that, I like to back up and take the, the big picture. Um, so what is happening? You got to ask what is happening 
when your cells and systems don't have these hormones, blood vessels are drying up and dying and going away. I actually just got off the phone with a woman who um, is, she's been in menopause 16 years. Now she did use hormones for several years and she felt great, but then she stopped them because she thought I feel okay. I don't need them. And now it's six years later and she's miserable again. And so you know, I, one of the things she has is her vagina. She has horrible vaginal atrophy. She, she doesn't want to be intimate with her husband because of that. So I was explaining to her about the blood vessels, but this is happening in every system in your body. So these hormones are part of what help a woman make a healthy baby. They're part of what help you grow into healthy adulthood to be a strong vitally alive, vibrant woman. So when you stop having hormonal stimulation, blood vessels start going away. These hormones are also anti-inflammatory. So inflammation goes up. And um, however long you've been in hormonal poverty, that has happened to more of a degree. Mm. So what happens is that your body takes up the receptors for these hormones because you're not using them. You're not feeding the receptors with estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So it goes, why are we going to expend energy throwing out the red carpet? And so the analogy I like to use is your new neighbor moves in and you invite them over for tea in the afternoon, right? And so you do it regularly and you even start preparing the tea in before they come because you know they're going to come, but then they stop coming. Are you going to keep making tea at three o'clock every afternoon for your neighbor? <laughs> no, you stop making tea. You don't even buy tea anymore. You don't buy cookies. You don't buy tea. You don't do anything. In fact, you lock the door and you close the curtains and you start grumbling about your neighbor. But the point is your body, it costs your body energy resources to put out the red carpet and say, estrogen, come to me. Progesterone, come to me. I love you. Testosterone. You, there's none there. So it's like, oh, I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to try and fix your hair falling out because you know that's a problem. Or I'm going to try and give you a sex drive, but it can't do it. And so there are no receptors. So then you start taking hormones. And what happens is when you've been in hormonal poverty for two decades, I have women three decades, you don't feel anything. And then you're like, I've been taking these for three months. I don't feel anything because there are no receptors. Now, your body's really clever. Just like if your neighbor one day came and knocked on your door and said, hey, I'd really like to come over for tea again. You might go, well, okay. And you give her a date next month, right? <laughs> and you're not going to be like, not be home. Tea now. Right. Yeah. And then not be home. But then she comes again, all right, another month. And she's like, well, I thought we were going to have tea. And you're like, are you really going to come for tea? And she says, yes. And then you like, okay, the next month you give her a date. So you get the point. If you, if she keeps coming, eventually you're going to make the tea and buy the cookies and invite her. And then before you know it, you're having tea and cookies every day. Can Your we body is the talk same about way. something other than cookies? Just think. I know. I know. I shouldn't say that. Like, I don't even eat cookies. I'm gluten free. What am I talking about? You're going to have some rice Close crackers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> tea and rice crackers. But you get the point. So you know, there's no data on this, clearly. I have to be totally transparent. There's no data on, you can start hormones at, after you've been in hormonal poverty for this long, and it will take this long for you to see results. And there is none. So I tell people, you are an experiment of one. Yeah. And you, right. But I, I'm more of the kind of doctor who's like, let's use common sense. Um, and so I have women, you know, who have been in, in, uh, hormonal poverty for decades and choose to use it and get benefit. And I have some who get grow impatient and like, I'm not doing this, but, um, I'm not convinced by this data that says that, oh, there's this five year window. Cause I've seen many, many women outside that five year window have a lots of benefits. Like you said yourself, Deborah, mm -hmm. um, and I, I have many patients. Yeah. I love that. And I want to come back to, yes, every, every woman watching this right now is a study of one, but I think there's also so very important that it's this entire generation. I mean, we don't have enough data because there haven't been enough of mm -hmm. us. 
We are right. it for our daughters and our nieces and, and all those younger women that we influence. We're it. And at some point in every generation, somebody had a gamble. Like they'd never seen it before. I never saw the, the immunization for measles or mumps and I'm going to gamble. And does this really work? They had to like, I don't know, does it, should I, shouldn't I, but we're that, right? You're absolutely right. And thank you for pointing that out. You know, a hundred years ago, our lifespan wasn't what it is now and it, it wasn't an issue. And so we just don't have the data. But I don't know, I, I, um, it makes sense to me that my hormones are part of what made me grow into a healthy, vibrant woman. And they're part of what keeps me there too. So to me, it's the same like having my potassium and my calcium and everything that I need to be healthy and vibrant. Uh, and I have found that because I've gotten into hormonal poverty uh, and I've seen women in hormonal poverty and it's, it's pretty miserable. Men in hormonal poverty is sad too. It's not good for any of us. Okay. So, and I think you really probably unpacked a little bit of the basis and your mission for hosting Stop the Menopause Madness. But would you, without giving away the shop in the store, would you tease a little bit of who can we expect? And what do you hope that a woman who attends walks away with? How will she be empowered? You should expect close to a hundred experts that are the creme de la creme in this field, right? This is not your HMO $30 copay uh, summit, okay? Or conference where you're gonna get, I'm gonna give you a pill for every ill or surgery for every symptom. What you are gonna get is the thought leaders in this field who really are proponents. I, I have to say mainstream medicine has abandoned women when it comes to hormones. They're like, no, just no hormones, no. Um, and so all women, many, many women are suffering uh, as they're in hormonal poverty. So you're gonna get the leaders who have really gone out and um, gotten the information and dug deeper into the studies that we have to say, no, that study doesn't say what you think it says. And they've really, uh, gotten to the heart of the matter that shows that hormones are nourishing and benefiting for women. But we're gonna talk about heart health. Um, we've got leaders with that heart disease and heart attack is the number one killer of women over 50. Mm -hmm. Most women aren't worried about that, but you should be because mm -hmm. that's what you're most likely to die from or become disabled from. Um, we have experts talking about dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, you know, that personally hits me, my mom has Alzheimer's and an advanced degree. She doesn't even know who I am anymore. And really she was the healthiest person I knew. So the only risk factor she had was she had been menopausal for three decades in hormonal poverty without hormonal therapy. And there's a study that shows that hormonal therapy reduces the risk of Alzheimer's by 79%, which wow. women are shocked to hear but they don't know about it. So you're gonna hear experts talking about how do you protect your brain, this precious mainframe computer? How do you protect your heart? We've got people talking about protection of bones, reversing osteoporosis, osteopenia yeah. without drugs. Mm -hmm. So this is not your drug crowd, okay? You're gonna learn how to do these things naturally. Deborah is on there mm -hmm. talking about how exercise you can use to balance your hormones or improve your hormones and get out of hormonal poverty. Um, we've got people, there's so much confusion about what do I eat? How many of you right here are now watching are like, I hear you sister, I don't know what to eat. We've got, well, JJ Virgin is on there talking about that. She just did a wonderful conference on that because there's so much confusion. Do I go carnivore, keto, raw, vegan? Like, what am I supposed to eat? So we're talking about how to make menopause the best time of your life, because in my humble personal opinion, um, this should be the best time of your life. I mean, we started off by talking, Deborah said, I'm in Africa, I'm in Tanzania. I used to say Tanzania, but now I'm here and they're like, no, it's Tanzania. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, they have British accents. And um I'm in, here in Africa tra and I'm traveling the world for 16 months. I promise you I couldn't do this if I didn't, you know, at 58, have my 
hormonal prosperity. So I know that you're not living your life fully if you're not in hormonal prosperity. And these are the experts who I've handpicked and cultivated to teach you. It really is intended and I've, it's intended to be the encyclopedia on how to make menopause the best time of your life. It's everything you're not hearing in your doctor's office, you're not gonna hear, and you're not gonna even get it on Dr. Google or YouTube, unfortunately, um, because Dr. Google is political, whether you know it or not. So you're gonna see mostly uh, big pharma and big surgery on there and same with YouTube. So if you are a woman, over 35 or maybe even under 35, if you know that you've got hormone problems, mm -hmm. this is the place for you to be. If you've struggled with your weight and you can't lose it and you've done like a lot of us, self-respecting weight loss programs that include diet and exercise calorie restriction, right? Or calorie, increasing calories out. This is the place for you. Why can't I lose weight? What's wrong with me? If you're starting to think that you're defective, it's not you it's what you've been trying you haven't had this information if you are tired and you can't sleep this is the place for you because our experts are going to tell you why you're having this problem and what to do about it if you don't care if you ever have sex again or when you do have you just have mercy sex and you don't enjoy it you are not having orgasms this is the place for you because i'm telling you this should be the best sex of your life best of your life. You don't have to worry about getting pregnant after a certain age. You should be enjoying yourself. <laughs> if you're having problems with your mood, like before I got out of hormonal poverty, I was on five psychoactive medications for mm -hmm. depression and anxiety. Fixed my hormones. I didn't need any of them. So this is the place for you if you've been suffering. You've really given up because you're like, I've tried everything. You've even thought life would be better if I weren't here mm. and I didn't have to live. I've been there. I know what that feels like, that hopeless place. And you think that nobody has any answers. This is the place for you to come and find out why you've been believing those lies and get the hope because that's what you should have when you have and you're empowered with the right knowledge, tools and support. And these people are some of the most brilliant people I've ever encountered. You will be on fire for your life, on fire for your health, on fire for your life and what's possible for you. And maybe next year, I'll be watching you on YouTube or on the internet in Africa. <laughs> living your dreams or whatever your dream is it's not everybody's dream to travel the world right whatever it is for you your dreams still live as long as you are breathing as long as you have breath you have life your dreams live and they are talking to you if you're like Karen I'm in so much pain I don't have any dreams I know some of you are there now let's fix your health and then you can start listening to your dreams because they don't go away. And then you can start living them. So good. I love it. All right. So for all of you here, I'm going to put the link down below so you can grab that, save your place. For anybody whose head went a hundred, like a hundred experts, you don't have to no. get it all. You pick and choose. Like what are the topics right now that are like burning? I want right. to know more about that and do that. I think we all get overwhelmed and let's just call the elephant in the room. Not the elephant in East Africa, but the elephant in the room here that, uh, you know, there are a lot of summits right now. There are a lot of like, here's another one and here's another one. So my advice to you is just say no to ones that feel like this is not it. But for those that feel like, okay, yes, now just focus on what do I want out of this? What would I most like the answers to or more information about? Focus on those and let the rest go. So no overwhelm. Don't mm -hmm. put yourself there. And um, Karen, is there anything else that I should have asked you while I've got you away from Safari? <laughs> yeah. So the one thing I should say, and your point is well taken, 100. So one thing I did do is I created a series of videos that walk people through 
like this is how you navigate this to give a framework so it's not like oh my gosh you walk into walmart and you're like where where do i even go so there is there is cohesiveness in a series and i i made a series of videos of me kind of walking people through how to do this so that is fantastic as only a woman who gets it would, right? I love it. 